In this video, we're going to talk about whether or not a heat pump is cheaper to operate than a furnace. And we're gonna tell you how you can calculate this because the truth is that it depends. And if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing. It's a great way you can support the channel if you find this content helpful. So if you wanna wait till the end of the video to see if it was helpful and worth subscribing for, feel free to do so. That's perfectly fine by me. But the bottom line is that in this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate whether or not a heat pump is going to be cheaper to operate in your region or a furnace is going to be more economical to operate. And in addition to that, we're going to talk about how you can force it to be more economical to operate a heat pump versus a furnace. And spoiler alert, it involves solar and we'll explain how to attack that and how to, the best way to make sure that not only just calculating the long-term energy efficiency of it and the electricity savings, but you, there's a way that you want to do it to make sure you're properly accounting for how much things are actually going to cost in the future. Because the truth is that today, although it might not make sense after using this formula, look at the formula, look at the numbers and say, huh, it looks like in my region, it doesn't make sense to operate a heat pump or to buy a heat pump for my home. Um, and it doesn't make sense to install solar panels because my break even is 10 years or 20 years or 30 years out. But when you start to take a inflation into account, oftentimes that changes. And I'll show you what the actual inflation number are on energy prices and I'll include a link in the description with more information so you can see for yourself what the actual inflation for energy prices has been over the past 25 years but more on that later and before we dive into the formula there's a few things you need to understand about heat pumps and efficiency ratings as well as furnace and furnace efficiency ratings and so we want to talk about those now now the first thing you're going to want to know what it is it, or a term that you're going to want to understand is what's called COP COP stands for coefficient of performance performance. This is the amount of watts. The basic formula is watts in or watts of electricity in compared to watts of heat out. So for example, if you had a COP of two, that would mean that you had one watt of electricity used to produce two watts of heat energy. And some of you might be surprised to find out that a watt not only has a, is not just a measure of electricity, but it's also a measure of heat. And we'll actually explain how many BTUs are in a watt and what that means. It's 3.412. You don't have to remember that now because I'm going to give you the formula here in a second and explain what that means. But the bottom line is that one watt of heat the same, you know, as one watt of electricity. And so if you had a space heater, one watt of electricity would equate to one watt of heat. That basically would be a COP of one, right? So basic electric resistive heat, like you get from a space heater or electric baseboard heat or electric in-floor radiant heat is going to be very inefficient because you have to, when they, you might've heard like electric heat is inefficient or electric heat is very expensive. That's why it's very expensive is because you don't get a multiple like you do with a heat pump. Now, the way that you get a multiple with a heat pump is because heat pumps use thermodynamics, which is heat transfer by state change. Thermodynamics is how we get that increased efficiency and engineers and manufacturers work together to try and figure out how to make heat pumps more efficient through the use of different refrigerants, inverter technology, which we talk about a lot on this channel and other videos. And I'll even uh, I'll link a video at the end to one of our favorite inverter heat pumps, how that works and, and what makes an inverter different than a traditional single stage heat pump. But the bottom line, is that COP is very important to understand for this formula. And so you just want to have a general understanding of what that is. And at the end of this video, I'll make sure to link another video that talks about heat pump efficiency ratings because there's other efficiency ratings like HSPF, SEER, and EAR. And I explain what all that means to kind of demystify it for you because it's not as complex as they make it sound when you really start to break it down. Now, the bottom line is that the truth is it depends. And you're really going to want to use this formula to understand whether or not it's more efficient to run a heat pump in your region because if natural gas prices are very low and electric prices are very high, it's probably not going to make sense to run a heat pump in your region. However, on the other hand, if natural gas prices are very high or you're on propane or you're using an oil fired system, then that might be much more expensive to operate. And then if your electricity rates, they might still be high, but because you're on propane, for example, in Colorado, when we were on propane, we were paying over $3 a gallon for propane. So basically any heat pump would have been 
uh, cheaper to operate. Not quite, not like a basic single stage heat pump, but bottom line is heat pumps were more efficient to heat with than propane because we were paying such an expensive amount for propane in order to heat our house. So you're really gonna wanna look at that. And just to get started, I'm gonna give you two numbers that you're gonna wanna have handy. Now, the first is going to be your electric rate in terms of cents per kilowatt hour and what your electric rate is. So it might be 10 cents per kilowatt hour. It might be 20 cents per kilowatt hour. You can grab your bill right now. You can pause this video if you need to, pull up your bill so that way you can follow along. And if you're having a hard time following along with the formula, I will put the formula in the description so you can see it visually. And if you post a comment, if you're struggling with it, we, we can respond to that and help you with that as well. But it's very simple, but you're gonna wanna have that kilowatt rate and you're gonna wanna make sure you're calculating the total bill based on what you're paying for electricity and dividing that by the kilowatt hour because even though your electricity cost might be 10 cents a kilowatt hour, oftentimes you'll have connection charges or different types of fees on a per kilowatt hour basis. So your actual kilowatt hour rate will be a little bit higher than what it says. So just make sure you have the accurate kilowatt hour rate because if it's 10 cents, it might make more sense to have a heat pump. But if it's 20 cents, you know, after you add in all the fees, it might not make sense. So you really wanna make sure you're accurate on that. And then the second rate that you need is your energy rate for gas in terms of therms, not cubic feet of gas because there's different ways that natural gas delivery is measured. 90% of the time your bill is going to be in therms because the energy density of natural gas, this is a fun fact for you. It actually varies by region. So for example, natural gas in Denver actually has lower energy density. And this is something we deal with sometimes on high efficiency installations where we're not quite getting the output that we were hoping for. We already deal with that because we have to derate for altitude because there's less oxygen at altitude for combustion, which means a big 200,000 BTU boiler might only actually put out 140,000 BTUs in terms of its actual output or 130,000 BTUs in terms of its actual output. So you're going to want to make sure you're reading what your therm rate is. And once you have those two numbers, this is the formula you're going to want to follow. So the formula that we're going to use to calculate your break-even coefficient of performance or COP is going to be as follows. Now, this formula also applies for changeover COP, meaning that if you're in a cold climate, you can look at your COP charts or your contractor can look in your COP charts and determine what temperature it makes the most sense to switch from natural gas or switch from heat pump as your primary operation to natural gas back up on those very cold nights. The break even COP is as follows. Now, first what you do is on top of your formula is you have your electric rate in cents per kilowatt hour. You multiply that times 0.8 or 0.96, depending on whether or not you have an 80% efficient furnace or a 96% efficient furnace. If it's an 80% efficient furnace, that would be times 0.8. If it's a 96% efficient furnace, that would be times 0.96. And then you multiply that times 29.3. And I'll explain where that number comes from in a second. And then underneath that formula on the bottom is going to be your gas cost by the therm rate. Now your therm rate, you want to make sure that you're accounting for not just the cost for the natural gas, but also any delivery charges and things like that that are on your bill. So when you're reading your bill, you'll normally have a charge that might say $1 is your therm rate, right? And it'll spell out what that is. But in addition to that, you're going to have local fees from the utility and things like that, that you also want to account for, because those are going to add substantially to your therm rate and those are still fees that are directly related to natural gas consumption not related to electricity delivery or something else and so that's what you want to pay attention to on your bill and that gas rate per therm let's say that was a dollar per therm you would just have 1.00 as your rate on the bottom of that formula now 29.3 where we get that number from is that is how we convert or that number alone isn't how we convert from watts to btus or from btus to watts but it's a way that we get there, it's actually how we get two therms from watts because one watt is actually the equivalent of 3.412 BTUs. One kilowatt is the equivalence of 3,400 BTUs. So in order to get to 29.3, what that number is, is that's 29.3 kilowatts is the equivalence of 100,000 BTUs. And by plugging in this formula, you're able to then determine what your break-even COP 
COP. Now that you have your break even COP, before we go to kind of these next steps, I'm gonna touch on something I mentioned earlier, which is how you can force your heat pump to basically be more efficient than a natural gas furnace and how you accomplish that. And the way that I'm referencing you to be able to accomplish that is by installing solar panels. Listen, that doesn't make sense in every climate. It doesn't make sense in every region. If you're in a region that doesn't have a good solar score or you don't get a lot of sun exposure, it might not make the most sense. However, if you live in a place like Phoenix, where you have a very moderate climate, hey, makes all the sense in the world, especially with you know 330 days of sunshine in Phoenix and a lot of energy production from solar panels, you're always gonna be in good shape. You're always, or not always, but you know 90 plus percent of the time you're gonna be producing a lot. You're gonna be getting good solar production and it's not very cold outside. So your heat pump's always gonna keep up, right? And so it makes a lot of sense in that specific climate. It's basically a no brainer. But I know what you're thinking. Okay, that's great. So now I have to go out and spend more money on solar panels just in a solar system and an inverter and maybe even battery backup just in order to get off the grid or at least reduce my electricity costs just to make it more affordable to run my heat pump. Now that's not making it free. That's just making it more expensive because I'm having to pay for my solar panels and that is correct. And so now what I'm going to talk about is how you actually want to account for this to make sure that you're doing these calculations properly because the truth is is that everything gets more expensive over time. This is basic inflation and we're going to talk about the electricity rates inflation that we've had over the past 25 years that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Now there's a link in the description where you can if you're curious you can go see what the in fact the actual inflation rates have been specifically for energy prices but the according to past 25 years which is what I looked at historically it came out to an inflation rate of 3.4 percent or 3.39 percent but I was just rounding up to keep it simple. At 3.4 percent inflation essentially what that means is that if you take that and extrapolate something that costs a dollar today 25 years from now what that means is that it's actually going to be a 230 percent increase in what things cost or essentially a decrease in your purchasing power and so if you're paying a hundred dollars for your electric bill today you might be paying two hundred thirty dollars for that electric bill in 25 years could be more than that could be less than that but the bottom line it's a vital part of that formula and just in my opinion if you want to perform that analysis on a conservative level you're going to want to do that based on a rating or an inflation rate of let's say doubling over 20 years if we're assuming the life of your HVAC equipment is 20 years and the life of your solar panels are 20 years which they can be slightly more or slightly less than that depending on the type of usage they're getting but the reason it's important to calculate for that is right now there's actually a tax credit on solar panels so if this is something you've been on the fence about doing you could potentially go out finance the solar panels if you were able to get good financing you don't want to use a super high interest rate that doesn't make sense because then that you know just adds to that expense but bottom line is even if you if you had a tax liability and you were planning on doing this instead you're going to get a 30 percent tax credit dollar for dollar on everything you spend on solar from now through 2032 according to that inflation reduction act so if something costs twenty thousand dollars in theory it actually only cost fourteen thousand dollars for those solar panels because of those discounts that you're getting in the form of a tax credit on your bill there's also no cap on solar tax credits like there is on heat pumps where heat pumps currently have a two thousand dollar cap on the heat pump tax credit and another thing to consider if you're going down that route is if you are at all planning on getting an ev i don't care one way or the other this is not like a moral thing for me i'm just bringing it up because if you've never had the experience of having an ev it is awesome to be able to plug in at night wake up to a full tank of gas or electric gas whatever you want to call it but the bottom line is that that it's literally the ultimate convenience and in most climates they work or work for with most people's ranges this is not a video about evs but my point is if you are planning on going down that route too well now you're also fixing in your gas costs because whatever the cost of the electric panel or the solar panels are over the next 25 years whatever the cost of the other equipment that are related to that or related to you know your ev over the next 25 years if you amortize those costs out you'll start to see that it does start to make financial sense but it becomes a big investment and therefore a big commitment so i wouldn't recommend going down that route unless you're relatively sure that you're going to be in the house for some time to come so you have some time to enjoy the benefits and 
recoup some of those savings. But that is the truth about the formula that you need to calculate whether or not it's cheaper to rent a heat pump in your home or if it's cheaper to run a gas furnace. And the last thing I want to point out is another point of savings is that if you are one of the people that is planning on going all electric, meaning you're putting in an all electric air handler and you're cutting off from the grid in terms of natural gas, you'll want to check with your utility to see or and on your bill to see what the actual connection charge was for natural gas. Because for example, at our office, we were paying a $50 connection charge just to have natural gas at the office when we don't use natural gas here because we have a cold climate heat pump. And we also use waste heat from Bitcoin mining to heat the shop. It's, I know it's very nerdy, uh, just a hobby on the side. It's not really profitable at the moment. But anyways, <laughs> it's a side uh, fun fact that because of that, we literally haven't used our natural gas connection at all in two years. And we were paying about $50 a month just to have it. And so for us, that's an additional $600 a year savings that we get to benefit from because we're completely disconnected from natural gas and we're not using it at all anymore. So keep that in mind. If you really start to look at all the ways that you can save by switching, it may make sense for you. And if it doesn't, hey, it doesn't. And you can stick with a, a natural gas furnace for the time being, especially if you're in a cold climate that has expensive electric rates and cheap natural gas. Just keep in mind, like I said, that can change over time. So it just depends what your goal is and whether or not you're trying to set yourself up uh, for long-term, you know, fixed energy costs by being completely independent and providing your own energy and your own heating, or whether or not you're okay being subject to some volatility in energy prices, which just does happen from being connected to the grid. But we all deal with it, or most of us deal with it. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver, Colorado, or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first-time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service, so you can stay up-to-date when we start servicing your metro. So hopefully you found that content helpful. And if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen uh, related to heat pump efficiency ratings. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we'll catch you on the next episode.